We were on Cabriola Island, but not for real. Due to the COVID-19 situation, we decided to stay home as much as possible. But thanks to our good friends, Cabriola painter Jenny McLeod and photographer David Chapman, and not to forget our drone pilot Rick Ward, we were able to make this episode of painting the island. It's going to be a cool Cabriola sunset. I hope you enjoy it and let's create a masterpiece. Hello and welcome in my studio. To save some time, I already painted an underlayer in the colors we're going to need for this sunset. And if you ever have painted with me before, you saw me doing this tons of time. So by now, you know the drill. At work. It's always nice to have a good, decent underlayer to paint on. This time I added a bit more Elias and Crimson to the ochre tones as this is a strong sunset. And if it's not red enough to your taste, you can also use cadmium red. That's a bit more aggressive. Every human being has a different opinion about reds. That is why the Dutch masters hardly did any sunsets. And if they did it, there was always a negative comment. Because the rich Amsterdam merchants, which were their clients, hardly could see any sunset in Amsterdam as the buildings were too high. In the meantime, we go into the blue and purple tones. We can mix phthalo blue, cadmium yellow, light and titanium white, and with a soft crisscross strokes, we can make a nice gradient. And the one inch brush is really fantastic for this purpose. And yes, it takes a bit of practice, but with no pressure, it will succeed. On the place where the sun goes down, we paint a strong highlight with cadmium yellow light and titanium white. Just blend it in, let's say on one third of the canvas. And of course, it's getting a bit too wet, so later, with a third layer, we can make the light stronger. And be advised, it's gonna get ugly now. I painted some orange and more red just above the sun. This is the point where students start to panic. But, oh, this looks terrible, what do we have to do? Well, nothing. Because the clouds will make it all good. And I will show you how. We mix ultramarine and Elysium Crimson till we have a nice purple tone. Load the brush and dip it into the yellow ochre mix. So we don't mix it for real, but just dip it in. And then paint it into the wet underlayer, which will result in a great soft effect. And of course, we have to make different tones by adding white. These are the so-called faraway clouds on the horizon. And they have to be painted in soft tones. The clouds above them will have a darker tone. And this is what we call a perspective effect with colors. That means that these clouds are further away. A good spot to practice is the left side of the canvas, as this will be covered by an island and foliage. So if you make a little mistake, no worries. On the other side of the canvas, we can do the same. Soft, friendly clouds above the horizon, and it's up to you how many clouds you want to paint. But my advice is, keep it all soft. These are the faraway clouds above the horizon. From this point, we go a bit more aggressive with a darker tone. And right away, you see the effect. But first, I want to show an interesting thing. With a light Taylor blue tone, we feather the color up. And this will give an interesting light effect behind the dark clouds. First, we do a couple of, we do a couple of small little cloudies. And then it's time for the main big cloud. In a painting like this, always make one huge cloud. Not too much, just one. We start with a darker gray purple tone. And by now, you know what to do. 
we bring up the first layer with the one inch brush and it will melt away into the wet under layer. Upon that layer we paint a darker cloud and look at that, the light is peeping through. In front of that we can even go a bit darker and then we have even three layers. Lots of work but the effect of this is impressive. And with a small amount of orange we can reflect some light in the lower clouds. And with a small filbert brush we can blend it in very softly. With a knife we can bring up some great spectacular extra highlights on the place of the sun. It needs some practice but it's a cool effect. And with a small round filbert brush we can fade it out or paint some more little light effects on the edges of the clouds. But be careful that you place the lights on the good sides of the clouds. The sun is down below and so you don't want light in a shadow part. And before we go on we need to paint an island. Yes, let's mix some ultramarine blue with burnt umber and it's almost black. As you might know I like to mix my own black and grey. If I want a bluish black or grey I add more blue, ultramarine that is. And if you want it more brown, I add more brown. How easy can it be? And if you need grey, add some white to it. In this case, we can add a bit of purple. For the island, don't make it all too solid. During a sunset, colors are fading away. The light becomes less, so make different tones. This will make the island a little bit more interesting and then fade it softly out with a clean filbert brush. In the distance we can paint the mainland with softer and lighter tones. Just add some white to it and you're good. Let's take a little break. If you ever need help or you have questions about painting you are always welcome in our beautiful center in Parksville. And as you might know, I love to support the Wildlife Recovery Center in Arrington. And this time I made something special for them. I will show you in a moment. Sylvia and Robin and all the volunteers worked hard on the center and after this difficult COVID-19 period, it's a relaxing place to get rid of all the stress. You can watch beautiful animals like Casey, the young eagle who broke a wing and is now recovering. And there is my good old friend Sandor. That particular day he was in a really good mood. Listen to this. And how are you doing? Well, you've got a lot to tell today, huh? We're having a nice conversation. Last time he was angry with me. You didn't want to show up, huh? Oh boy, your teacher is talking now with birds. No worries for the rest, I'm okay. And let me show you the surprise I made for Sylvia and Robin. Sylvia, it's always a pleasure to be here. And I know that uh, you and Robin put your whole heart in this beautiful center. So I got a surprise for you. Oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? Thank you so much. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's one of my best pieces I ever made. I'm not bragging, but it is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to donate this to you. Uh, and I hope you will find a good boss for him. And I hope it's really supporting your beautiful center, what you got here. We appreciate you to come here. And as long as I'm here, I keep on supporting you with my television show. Yeah, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. And it's people like you that actually make a difference to our centers. So thank you. we can't say um, thank you more. Thank you. And Sander agrees with this. <laughs> Let's take a look into the baby room where the kids who lost their mama can play free and have a good education before they will return to nature. It's incredible how this baby drags on heavy pole all over the place like it is a straw or a match. And this is my favorite place for animal sketching. 
just like this little fellow here. And we saw a lot of new accommodations. All carpentry is done by volunteers. In Dennis Mook, you can have a little retreat and come to rest and maybe do some sketching. And here are my two friends, Ray and Knut, having their daily wrestling match. Of course, all friendly, no paws, no teeth. Only Knut shows little Ray who is the real boss here. But it's fun to watch our Ray brought back joy in Knut's life. If you want to see this all by yourself and see how big a beer really is, come by in Arrington and enjoy a wonderful day seeing all these beautiful animals. Check out the website first and have fun. See you then. Yes, we had a wonderful day over there. Sylvia gave us a complete round trip showing us all the new items in the park and in the coming shows I will show you more. Let's dive into the sea. Water is a darker reflection of what you actually see. On its way down, the light loses its power. And certainly with a sunset, it's darker than normal. The easiest thing to do is start with orange with a touch of yellow ochre. Then we create a light path with a highlight tone. Then with soft crisscross strokes, we fade in the light path. And of course we need reflections of the dark clouds. Let's do that too and softly fade it in. And I went a bit fast forward because otherwise you fall asleep and we don't want that. So no, I am not a fast painter, but we just speeded up the video. And of course we do this also to save some time. Otherwise we cannot put all these items in a small half an hour, but I think you can follow me easily. Fading in layers is the most important technique of these kind of paintings. It is the art of fine motorizing skills. No pressure, more pressure and heavy pressure are the skills a painter must exercise. And guess what this is? One big great exercise. For the optical effect I made the lower part darker. And here, underneath the mainland, we can paint some lighter reflections. Water is always unpredictable, but this bleach reflections gives a kind of spooky effect below the island. As the sea was pretty flat that day, we only do a few small waves. Don't make it too wild. We fade out the lower part of the wave, not the top end, and use a small round filbert brush. And let's do one more. He's closer by so we can make it a bit bigger for the perspective effect. Let's make him stronger and then fade out the lower part again. With a knife and some highlights, and it was cadmium yellow light and titanium white, we can create a light path. The knife can make spectacular effects. That is if you handle him well. The trick is that you don't press, just scratch the highlight color into the wet paint. The cool thing is that when it's all dry and you hang it up on the wall with a good spotlight on it, this light path will become 3D or three-dimensional. Now before we go on, let's take a little break and let me tell you a bit about Cabriola Island. This island lays 5 km east of Nanaimo and of course you can go there now by ferry. The first European was the Spanish captain José María Narvas. He landed his boat, the Santa Saturnina, in 1791. That's a long time ago. Narvas is said to have given the name Punta de Caviola. Later, Caviola was corrupted in Cabriola. And some people named it Caviota, which means seagull. So you see how during the history names can change. It's a pity we couldn't go there, but thanks to our lovely student Jenny McLeod, an excellent painter from Cabriola, I was connected with Cabriola photographer David Chapman. And he gave us permission to use his photographs for this show. David, thank you. Thank you for helping us out in these difficult times. 
and also thank you Rick Ward, the famous Vancouver Island drone pilot, who gave us the most wonderful videos for all our shows during the years that we producing Painting the Island. So Jenny, David and Rick, you are wonderful people and we cannot thank you enough. And of course we will continue making painting and history shows like this as we got tons of great reactions from all the viewers. And that is of course very important to us. Let's work a bit more at the sunset. I had an idea. To put a blue heron in our painting. You know I love animals and the blue heron is always one of my favorites. He is, he works on its own. It's a kind of lonely fishing artist. I love watching him standing there for hours and hours and then suddenly he catches a fish. Have you ever tried to catch a fish like that? Well, success. It won't happen. We need an angle. But this guy can do it. Perfect timing, lots of patience and bullseye. Yes, they have something special. And I know that the Blue Heron has a special place in the hearts of the Vancouver Islanders. So we let him dream away over the Cabriola sunset. And I think it adds something special to our painting. It's always fun to paint silhouettes. As kids we, were, we did this for hours. Cats, dogs, birds, elephants, you name it. And we made complete acts with it, showing silhouettes behind a white sheet. The blue heron has this strange nick in his neck. And he has also a little wig above his head with the tiny little ponytail. And that makes him so cute. We leave the heron alone for a while and later we will give him a branch to sit on, to stay on. <laughs> but first, let's frame the painting frame? Yes, we gonna frame it with foliage. We take the fan brush and with the darkest tone or black we gonna paint some nice foliage. We want to give the viewer the impression that he or she is looking through the trees. Now don't go too far into the painting and don't make it too dense. The technique is that you push away the bristles of the brush. I started here with the fan brush and then the small round brush takes it over to do the fine branches and leaves. I recommend if you ne never did this before buy a block of 10 oil uh, paint sheets. It's very cheap and very nice to practice on because it takes a while to master this technique. And the more you do it, the better it will go. For the real fine work, we need a palette stick. We lean the hand on the palette stick and then all the power goes into your fingers. And this will make the branches and the foliage, which is in fact a couple of trees, a bit more natural. And remember, if you ever need some help with this technique, come by in Parksville. I'll be happy to show you and give you a demo. It's really fun. On the other side of the canvas we can do exactly the same. And again I push the bristles forwards. So I don't make a brush stroke, I push them forwards. And then the bristles will do the work for you. By the way, you will see a bit of light reflections in the wet dark paint. Sorry for that, I bought myself a brand new video light set which is fantastic but it's a struggle to adjust it. It's a three point uh, video light set and I always dreamt about is to have that in my private television studio. But as every new item, it's always a struggle to find the right adjustments. When I started this episode, I thought, okay, this is working great. What a bright colors. And in a small viewer of the camera, it was really looking good. But when I start editing, 
I thought, oh boy, on my big monitor it was one big glittering everywhere. So I had to start all over again. You see, even lightning is a technique you have to learn. And I can assure you there's nothing more difficult than to find the correct lightning for a painting show like this. Anyway, your teacher is learning and so are you. But at the end, we will all improve. Let's give the heron some crown under the feet. Again, it is the same trick. We push the bristles upwards with the fan brush and it will finish off the painting really nice. Like I said, we start with a fan brush and do the finishing touch with a small round brush. Of course, you can decide how much foliage you want to do. I, like I said, don't make it too solid, leave it a little bit open. And at the end, with a small round brush, we can do some nice little branches to make it a bit more playful. And the heron is really staring over the sea to the sunset. I think we're almost done. Next time our time traveler will join the show again, but this month was too hectic and too busy with starting up the lesson center. Thank you for your understanding. We appreciate. The blue heron is looking over a wonderful Cabriola sunset. Also thanks to our friend David with his wonderful photographs. Thank you for that. I hope you enjoyed the show. Check out our website. Till next time and keep on painting.